Hmm. Hey, my loves, and welcome to another live. This is going to be a really, really, really triggering one. So I am kind of sorry about that. And just letting everyone know in advance that this will probably, definitely trigger a lot of people. So the topic that I have for us today, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, the topic that I have for us today is about spirituality. And today I want to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny and the paradox of spirituality. Lately, and uh, I, again, Hi, Sylvia, welcome. So when I do these lives, I don't usually know what I'm going to talk about. It's just something that is present in the moment for me. And I just share that. And I I shared a few days ago where we had a really like maybe the, the most amazing life we have had until now. It's two lives before this one. If you want to check that out, it's called... Uh, the witch wound on social media and safe spaces to share our gifts that live was like literally life-changing and it was so much fun to connect with all of us and today like that live was inspired by this situation that happened thank you sister <laughs> uh, this situation that happened where I had a friend of mine who is very intuitive and she was made fun of by someone else on social media because of her gift. So someone was like making fun of her gift saying that like it's not real. And I was sharing that there's so much paradox in that because I know that those gifts are real. And me and many people that I know have those gifts, those intuitive, psychic, multidimensional abilities to feel into other people's emotions and energy fields and read energy and like just know things um, intuitively and stuff like that. So I get that, but I also get that for people who don't get it or don't understand what that is, it can be kind of funny for us to say that we talk with dragons or that we do energy healing or that, you know, any kind of, of thing like that. So I get that. Welcome, brother. So I was just, um, I just found this other video right now, just before coming live, where someone was like make not just making fun of people who do kundalini activations and i'm i'm not sure if uh all of you know what that is like kundalini energy is like our vital life force energy that moves through us and that literally keeps us alive and it is said that it is the kundalini awakening through like up the chakras that that's what we call like spiritual awakening is is when our kundalini awakens and we call this the serpent energy that moves up our chakras so even that just saying that can be kind of hilarious and ridiculous ridiculed by people who don't like who are just not in, on that vibe or on that path you know um and and so like so kundalini activation is people who have abilities to activate and awaken other people's kundalinis and honestly we kind of all have this ability it's just that when our kundalini awakens we have this ability to move our kundalini and someone else's kundalini as well so let me know uh, in the comments if you know what a Kundalini awakening is, if you have had one uh, where your Kundalini has awakened, if you have ever received a Kundalini activation or ever given a Kundalini activation. Hey brother, welcome, welcome. And let's talk about it. So 
this video that I was watching, someone was making fun um, of someone else doing a Kundalini activation. You've never had, but you know what it is. Okay, great. And, and so someone was doing a Kundalini activation and I myself uh, have my Kundalini awaken. I can move my own Kundalini. I can move other people's Kundalinis. Okay, you haven't. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, so for those of us who don't really know what it is or how it looks like, it can look ma in many different ways, you know? But it can look like your body like shaking and making some weird movements and spasms as the energy moves through the body. And not sure how I can raise it. Um, I would say, Alberto, that for that, um, there are like many practices like from Tantra, from uh, meditation practices and stuff like that, that are uh, aimed to awaken your Kundalini energy and activate it through the chakras. Um, and at the same time, I feel that sometimes like some people like work on awakening it and other people it kind of just happens naturally it's what we call like having a spiritual awakening and then you start having all of these weird multi-dimensional experiences that it's hard to explain for someone who doesn't know what they are but for people who have gone through those they get what that is um your chakras are blocked, but you feel some kind of energy flow through your spinal cord. It feels kind of pleasurable, but then because of blockages, it doesn't flow freely. Yeah, so that there's also that. So there's a lot that can be said about that. See, it's funny because that's not like what I wanted to talk too much about today, but it's, it's important as well. So thank you for all for commenting and sharing. And please ask questions and like, I'm, I'm here to, to talk about it. So, so, okay. So I have also received Kundalini activations and these can be very gentle or extremely intense and powerful experiences that might be literally life changing. And so there was this video of someone doing an, um, a Kundalini activation online on someone else and that person was like receiving so they were lying down and just receiving the energy yes snakes and dragons are definitely related to kundalini awakening yes for sure um that's why we call them the serpent rising and and also the dragon energy is also very connected with our kundalini awakening so this person had this video of her doing this Kundalini activation on a client. And then there were like a bunch of people uh, making fun of that video or even worse saying that that person was like, a, how do you say, a, like a trickster and that they were like, what's the word in English? That they were like taking advantage of people who are like naive or they were saying something in those lines, you know, and that uh, those people were like victims to uh, like a con. Um, the, that person was like a con artist or something like that. However, you say that, that this person was like uh, uh, using the naivety or the pain uh, or the ignorance or whatever of someone else to then make money out of it. And they were saying like, oh, these people pay like a hundred or thousands of dollars to like do this thing online where you're just laying down and someone pretends that they are doing something. And they were saying that these people were victims of this uh, scheme, like they were calling it a scheme, a scam. So... I, I just watched that video and I was like, ooh, okay, more paradox for us to bring into our life today. Okay, I do get that. And that's why I am calling that today's life is about 
spirituality, the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, and the paradox of all of it. Because there is a lot of beauty to it and there's a lot of bad to it. There's a lot of ugliness to it. There's a lot of humor to it. And there's a lot of paradox through all of it. So there are like, it's like a, dub, a double edged sword or like two sides of the same coin where you have g people who are genuinely helping other people with their psychic gifts or with energy healing or something like that. While at the same time, there are other people who use those gifts or those abilities or pretend to have them to... Um, it's funny because I'm trying to figure out what are the expressions in English, but to pray... Is that how you say to pray on those who don't know so much about it? Is that how you say it? Like, And, and to trick people, basically. So... That can be very bad and very ugly. So it can also be very humorous. So for example, on the last live that I was sharing, on the two lives ago, I was sharing that like, uh, so the Kundalini activations, for example, are like doing light language can be as like moving our hands in certain ways and doing energy healing and energy work that we can like be moving our ways in ways that uh, our hands in ways that look kind of weird and kind of peculiar and maybe kind of funny you know and so there is this paradox of humor uh where like or kundalini activations where you can be like shaking or like doing weird things and people making fun of that or even worse than making fun, saying that the people who are facilitating that, that are just, that those people are uh, fooling or tricking uh, their clients who are receiving that. So that's like the beauty and the paradox and the ugliness of all of it, where there are people who are of service, there are people who can do energy work and are very intuitive and psychic and healers healers is a real thing right and at the same time there are people who kind of use that in a way that is a little or very manipulative and that's also not fun and it's also not fun when there are people who are genuinely helping other people then being criticized and ridiculed and um, attacked on social media for sharing those gifts, for doing that. So please let me know if, if you have noticed this happening. So let me know if you have, let me know if you yourself are, or you know someone who is an energetic healer, for example or very intuitive or psychic. And let me know if you have also seen people making fun of psychics or of healers. And if you have also seen people who are supposed to be psychic, psychics or healers, but they are just, oh, what's the word? Like tricksters. Yeah, tricksters. So there's all of that, uh, there's all of those, like, all around. Yes, you have friends that are healers, yes. So I have met them all. I have met people who are healers and psychics, and I have met people who... Um, actually, I'm going to divide this second group into groups, which is there are people who are psychic and can move energy, but use it not to help people but to harm them and fortunately i have had experiences with people like that and trust me it's not only not fun but it can be very dangerous it is the first time that you're getting in touch with this topic of making fun and mocking healers yes yeah, so especially with social media like i am seeing this happen so much so much like so so much and it hurts my heart in so many different ways so like the first group of people are the true genuinely 
pure-hearted healers and psychics who are actually helping other people. Then the second group of people are those who do have gifts and abilities but use them to hurt or manipulate others. And then the, the, the third uh, group of people is those who pretend to have these gifts and abilities. They don't actually have them, but they make this persona and they put on this show to trick other people. And this is really sad because this is like the very ugly side of spirituality and people who are consciously aware that there's more to life than just going to a job and going to school and like living like a normal life that we we saw growing up but there are all these nuances to it that i feel it's so important that we talk about them and like even for me for example for a while there i literally stopped sharing light language and energy healing and any kind of stuff like that because i needed to be very grounded and clear on what i was doing and what that how that was serving other people and who were the people i was actually meant to serve and those people and like that those things are not for everyone like and it's very dangerous nowadays with social media that when we share something and I share that on the, the other live as well, that when we share something on social media, it's like we're posting it to the public. We cannot choose who watches our content and our videos and our posts and who doesn't. So that can be very dangerous when, because like we are so vulnerable and transparent and open for people to judge us, to misjudge us, to make fun of us, to to attack us so it's it's a very tricky subject so that's why i wanted to bring this on for all of us to talk about today let me read what you're writing brother there was a person who claimed to remove implants in my body i felt i had implants and charged a lot of money and then when i went for the session he he didn't just made me meditate and say i have the part to remove the implants and left oops yes so yeah that's so sad and hey twin brothers thank you for joining me it's so sweet to have both of you here i had a terrible situation as well i went to a supposed meditation and healing place and at the end was a horrible experience and i gained an infection straight away yes yes that's so fucking sad and i've like i've had for example people who said they were healers and i trusted them because like uh, not only they were healers and psychics but their family were as well and they were very people who were very very well known in the spiritual healing community so i was like i was younger and i was like Maybe I should listen to them. Like, even if my intuition was like, something is off, something is off. But I was like, maybe I'm younger and maybe they know more than me. So maybe let me learn from them. And like, to be honest, and like, this is going to get like very weird. Uh, so I'm not going to share too much about it, but just a little. Um, I had a meditation that I did with someone who was supposedly helping me meditate and blah 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 where at some point in the meditation i could see and feel that i was being eaten by like gargoyles i don't know if you know what that is it's like those things that you see on like harry potter or like movies like that these weird gargoyle beings and i was literally being eaten by those beings during the meditation and once the meditation stopped, I felt I got sick and I was in a very bad place for a very long time and really bad things started happening in my life after that. And it took me a long time to clear myself from that and to bring myself back into my own energy. And I know this can sound very energetic and spiritual and woo woo, like I get that, but I've been there. And I've also been in places, for example, 
this is like a different example and i didn't know we were gonna go so deep into this so thank you all for sharing your experiences and i'm really sorry like it's so sad that sometimes we are so beautiful and pure and open to to do meditations or healings and then we have such terrible experiences and i feel that that's so freaking sad and unfair that people with such pure hearts have to go through that and so i don't want that to happen on my watch and i've had also experiences for example this is very different this is not going to be so woo woo and like energetic and spiritual but the more like grounded experience that i've had was for example for many years i have studied buddhism and tantra and meditation and transcendence and non-duality um and there was a point in my life where i was like oh like i'm here and i'm learning this and i'm supposed to transcend everything and it felt like i would i had a point in my life where i was like maybe i have a block because like i don't have i don't want to like um have okay how do i say this on on social media without being um hmm, censored um I don't want to have uh, relationships, like intimate relationships with just everyone, just because I'm a Tantra teacher or because I'm transcending being a human and transcending my ego and non-duality and blah, blah, blah. Like for, for forever, I've always known that I am someone who like, I am absolutely like monogamous. Like, I am not at all, and like, no judgment if that's you, but I'm not like polyamorous, like, that's just not me, and that will never be me. Like, that's just, that just doesn't sit well for me in my life and in my body. Uh, my God, yes, I have experienced some have casted black magic like spell where I would get sleep paralysis, like someone choking me, and then I would have fevers and all of that and then anxiety attacks yes unfortunately i also know what that is so this is why i feel these conversations are so important for us to have and honestly maybe that's me but i don't see that many people sharing about this so let me be the one to step forward and open the space for us to talk honestly and vulnerably and truthfully about this because someone has to do it. And if I don't see anyone else do it, then here I freaking am. So, yes, yeah, I was sharing, for example, I had that experience with Tantra and spirituality and non-dualism and meditation where like people around me and the teachings I was learning made me feel that I was blocked because I didn't just want to have intimate relations and intercourse with everyone that I knew, you know, like... And for a long time, I felt that maybe there's something wrong with me, that I, I just want a partner and I want a family and I want to be with one person and just deepen into that connection and not connect with a bunch of people. Like, and again, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be judgmental whatsoever if that's your truth and if, if that's truly what you feel is for you and for your life and that's what makes you happy but it's not for me it's just not for me only because you're open and non-judgmental i'm able to share it freely thank you for that oh thank you brother i really i really appreciate that thank you may i be a safe space for us to share these things that are so uncomfortable sometimes because someone has to do it and i feel in spirituality and i've been kind of hating honestly that word I still use it, but I've been kind of hating it because of all the contrast and paradox and duality that is mixed with that. Um, and yeah, it feels like for a long time, I it has been my journey and my mission to be just like, you know, like just someone who talks about it, even when it's uncomfortable. Someone who brings this uncomfortable paradoxical subjects uh, into the light and talks about them instead of like pretending it's not there or like you know like may i be a safe space for us to share 
and if no one talks about it then yeah it's triggering for me and it's not always easy but may i be the one to show up for us so yeah i also had that experience with uh, tantra and non-duality and all of that and for a long time like people around me and again the teachings made me feel that there was something wrong with me that i needed to be more um again trying to not be censored uh hmm, more um hmm um tantrically open i think if i say tantrically open you get like that i'm saying that i'm talking about that word that has an s an e and an x uh, an s an e and an x <laughs> like that's what i'm talking about like and yeah like that i kept feeling that pressure from the spiritual tantric community that i needed to be open in that way for other people for me to be enlightened and honestly and sadly it took me many years to figure out that that was bullshit and that was not for me and again it's okay if that's your path and if you actually enjoy connecting with uh, different people that's just not for me that's never been me and i started thinking that there was something wrong with me because i wasn't like that that i was blocked that there was something wrong you know like and only now that so many people yeah like and people did this like consciously and unconsciously and then yeah i thought like oh yeah i'm so blocked like i should like let other people touch me and like you know like and ugh, that's like i love hugs i'm a very like huggy person like i'm always hugging the people that i love like it's uh I don't know what it is, but like there's, there are different ways to express love. For me, like I'm a hugger. I love hugging people, but only people I feel safe with and people that I love. But like, yeah, for many years, I was like feeling really weird about all of that and like trying to find myself in the mix of all these weird spaces where people were doing things that just didn't feel right for me. And when you're on that journey of discovering yourself, you start admiring those people who you think they're the healers and they're always right. So you accept everything as your truth. That's why it's important to believe in your own inner power above everything. Yes. Oh, I just got chills uh, reading that, Marta. Thank you. And oh, I just got chills like even in like my face and my head. Like this is so freaking sad. Like I've been in so many so many shitty situations you guys like seriously like you wouldn't believe my journey has not been so easy especially in regards to all these subjects and this is why i stopped doing energy work and i stopped uh, i also like had even like friends and people like that that were like maybe like i was sick or i was going through something that would tell me oh do you want me to send you reiki or do you want me to send you energy or like i'm gonna clear some you have some entities let me clear the entities and because they were older than me and i thought they were wiser than me and i thought oh i'm i'm much younger maybe they know better than me i would again allow myself to receive that and then I would feel really bad or nauseous or I would get sick or like I'd feel these weird things happening in my body and in my energy that then like all of a sudden I decided that I would never or at least until I feel like it, I don't right now at this moment, I don't receive energy healing from anyone. And if someone asks me, and this is sad because there are people who are actually healers and who genuinely can help us and do beautiful things but i would rather not receive from anyone than receive something wonky do you think there's a way to raise awareness about this or escape from that or is just meant to be in your journey for you to grow through this experience Fuck! like i knew we had to go there at some point in this life because it's like if we're talking about this yeah we need to also address that so Honestly, the most honest thing I can say about anything in life is that I don't know anything. 
that's why like i don't even like and maybe i will kind of drop that altogether like i really don't like the word coach or mentor or spirit guide or healer or whatever at all because of this because i don't know anything i don't know anything about life i don't know so there is a way to escape from this yes it's connecting with our intuition more than anyone else so if i tell you like go right but you feel in your heart to go left don't freaking listen to me listen to you like even if i am older or i seem wiser or more experienced than you in whatever subject like can we please listen to ourselves especially nowadays with social media where we are bombarded with at bombarded with so much energy and so much like information that other people create other people's opinions other people's experiences and we're just consuming like all the experiences and all the thoughts from someone else but what are your thoughts what do you think not what i'm saying or what the other gurus whatever are saying what do you think what do you feel so uh, uh, a way for us to raise awareness first of all i think is to talk about this that's like the most basic way for us to raise awareness is like having people that talk about this and literally sharing freely and honestly our experiences then it's also having like intuition and and uh, discernment and unfortunately like this we kind of develop this as we grow older but as we are younger and we're just like in the beginning stages of our spiritual awakening and stuff like that, we are so um, susceptible and vulnerable to having those experiences, unfortunately. And yeah, I can also say that from a higher perspective, everything that happens in our lives is there for our evolution and our growth. But even that even saying that it is there's a paradox in that as well because that's completely true and at the same time we can use that as an excuse or as a way to like um you know like to pretend that something is okay when it's not you know like yeah from a higher perspective we can say that we had to go through those experiences because we learned something from that and then we made different choices and decisions and like that build our character and our discernment and our intuition and blah 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 we learn from it but at the same time it's like you know at the same time it's like some of that is just bullshit and some of that is just unfair and some of that is just sad and for people who are spiritually awake, aware, whatever you want to call it, we have such a big responsibility to be of service in a way that is not manipulative and that where we're not, this can go, this can go so ugly and bad and sad so fast. For example, imagine like I am a healer or a psychic and I genuinely, genuinely want to help. But then there's this dark side where it's like, you need my healing for you to heal that. And like, this can be conscious or unconscious. And then other people feel that they need that. They need your healing to move on with their lives or, you know, like that they need an external source to heal, that they need an external source for whatever, you know, like, let me read what you're saying. When we say we don't know anything, then there is room to know more. If we say we know everything, it becomes dead end or full stop. So yes, we don't know anything in reality. Honestly, that's kind of how I feel. Like there's a saying in Portuguese, there's this poet who said uh, in Portuguese something like, um, só sei que nada sei, which means um, I only know that I don't know anything. And that's the most honest thing I can I can say. <laughs> like, yeah, totally, it comes from within, yes. And it's important that we find other people who genuinely want to help and genuinely have good hearts 
so that we don't fall for this trap. And this sometimes even happens unconsciously, where people are not even aware that they are doing it. For example, I've had uh, recently people coming to me to like wanting to like awaken their light language and they come to me because I speak light language and I draw light language and blah, blah, blah. And like lately, I've been very cautious about that. And not just cautious, but like I express over and over again that first, you don't need me to awaken your light language. You don't need me or anyone else to do anything. But that's, there's also like a paradox to that because it's nice to have people who are more experienced than us, you know, but the genuinely good hearted people who know what they are doing. So it's like learning from elders, learning because like otherwise we would also like um, not value like the knowledge that our grandmothers and grandfathers have for us, for example you know, in regards to plants or earth or like raising families or growing up or life or whatever. So it's important that we also receive uh, support and guidance from people who are more experienced or older or w whatever. It can be like even a friend who says, Madalena, you're doing this thing and I can see you doing it and maybe you can check that out and maybe I will let you know this. And that can be really helpful. So it's also nice that we don't get too stuck in our own mind and think that we are the only ones with the real truth and that no one else can help us. But it's very important to have discernment. And for someone like me who has gone real deep into spirituality and also self-development, both those two things can be very tricky. Because even self-development, it's like, it's good that you are aware of yourself and that you want to evolve and become better or whatever, um, that you literally want to develop yourself. But it can also become a rabbit hole that can start becoming um, a detriment to you instead of something that is helping you. Like reading all these books about self-development, watching all these YouTube videos about self-development, going to uh, lectures and events about self-development can be very healing and uplifting and activating and can help us a lot. But also too much of it can be very det detrimental. Again, it's a balance and a judgment and a discernment that we need to have all the time in our lives all the time in our lives so i kind of just honestly i just pray for all of us and i pray that i don't unconsciously do any of those things even unconsciously and this is tricky for someone who is like growing a business and like like me for example growing a business and doing like coaching and mentoring and stuff like that where I don't consciously or unconsciously manipulate people in whatever way to where they think they need my services because honestly a really good coach or a really good mentor or a guide will tell you that you have everything within yourself because that's the only truth that doesn't mean that you cannot get help from someone else or guidance or support and that working with someone else cannot be valuable. But we really do need to have this discernment and this balance. So this is kind of what I wanted to bring to the table today. Also with like um, things like um, Kundalini awakenings or stuff like that, where people can be like shaking or trembling. And I've been there and I know that that happens while at the same time, or speaking light language, for example, while at the same time, I'm aware that if someone just comes, uh, finds a video of me and I'm like doing things like this and speaking weird languages, that it can be kind of hilarious for someone who doesn't know what that is, right? I feel that I have great please with me. What do you mean? You have ah, people, sorry. <laughs> you have great people with me. 
somehow my path joined me to them to very trustful people yeah like bless you sister bless you bless you that is such a blessing honestly i have not been blessed that way for most of my life even things you know guys like you know on instagram and especially on tiktok where of course this doesn't show up on your feed if you're not into the super woo, -woo spiritual stuff like me but there are even these videos that I found on Instagram and especially on TikTok where people are just doing energy work or energy healing or whatever, spells or whatever. And just by scrolling through, you can like catch something or feel weird just from scrolling through that and finding that. So again, discernment and like energetic protection and psychic protection. Again, I know this can sound very woo-woo and spiritual, but honestly, it can be a real thing. They teach me that I am responsible for me, my life, that I have the ability to cure, to change myself. Yes, exactly. 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 It's people like, we. I feel we all need these really deep and honest conversations. We need to talk about these things. Because I see like both sides of the coin and both polarities and spectrums, like the people who are genuinely helping other people and doing energy work. And then on the other spectrum, people who don't understand it and make fun of them. And then people who do kind of evil energy work or like, you know, with bad intentions and people receiving it because they don't know better, you know? And on social media, like, we are always, like, again, we are always tuning in to how other people are living their lives. We also need to figure out, but what do I want? Do I want to live like them or do I want something different? And that's also the beauty of, of social media. It's like you can watch a video or a lifestyle of someone that you wouldn't even imagine that for yourself if it wasn't for social media. And then you see that and you're like, oh, yeah, I would actually also love to travel or to build a community or a retreat center or like raise my kids in nature, whatever. Maybe you wouldn't think about that if you haven't seen that on social media. But at the same time, because we are bombarded with so many people, with so many different lifestyles, so many different experiences, so many different thoughts and opinions, it can be hard to then find ourselves. And what do I want? And as I shared before, that happened with me with Tantra and Tantric whatever. And uh, I know that there's a lot of people who use humor to bring some of these aspects to life. And I have some of these people in my life and I love them so much. They make me laugh from things I wouldn't uh, have laughed before. And it helps also to like, um, not take some things so seriously, but also to lighten up the energy. I once was almost persuaded to do that. You mean the the <clears throat> tantric connecting blah blah blah? Um, because yeah, I've I've freaking been there, unfortunately, many times where I felt that persuasion or that pressure, but my body, yes, yeah. But my body and me were like, that's just not me. That is there something wrong with me that I just want like uh, one partner for my life and that I want like him to be the father of my kids and that I just want to love him and connect with him solely. Like, am I crazy? <laughs> is, it, is it just me? Am I blocked? Is there something wrong with me? Like, uh, you know, and again, I'm not saying that there is something wrong with people who genuinely feel like connecting with many people but that's just not me that's just like for sure and i've like really like meditated and like thought about it for so many years and like i tried like to see like there maybe there's something wrong with me maybe it's because i watched 
as I was younger, the Disney movies that were like the priest and the princess. And maybe that's like a program that I had in my mind and maybe like whatever. But like, no, no, no. Yeah, then you feel like you're the only the only one wrong. It turns into an identity crisis almost. Like it literally uh, became an identity crisis for me for a long time. And I honestly thought that there was something wrong with me and that I could not like actually be a good Tantra teacher. First of all, because to be honest, and I'm sorry, that will sound a little judgmental and I'm sorry it is, but most of the Tantra that we learn nowadays, I'm sorry, but I call bullshit. I'm, I'm sorry, yes, that's my own judgment and my own opinion. And I don't want to say it's all of them, but most of them are bullshit. And I'm sorry, but like Tantra, the Tantra that I studied was about meditation and transcendence and non-duality. And only a tiny bit of it was about the SEX. Nowadays, it's like the connecting and touching everyone and letting everyone touch you and like you're with everyone. And like, I'm sorry, but no, I call bullshit. I'm sorry if I'm judgmental. I don't care, honestly, but that's just not for me. And again, beautiful if that is for you and that genuinely makes you happy and you feel so free in that. I don't feel free in that. You know, like I made a video uh, a while ago talking about what does freedom mean to you? For some people, freedom might mean connecting and having relationships with many people. That's For me, that's not freedom. For me, I don't know what that is, but that's not something that I want to experience, you know? I honestly feel discomfort in that, you know? And that's okay, like... Like, again, no judging the people who genuinely like that but that's just not me and and sometimes like people even say like oh if you just want to connect with one partner and you you want your partner to only connect with you it's because you have blockages and like you are uh, how do you say like possessive and attached to them and there's something wrong with you and like you should let everyone be free and like i've fallen for that like so many times yeah, I feel you. Like, seriously. I've fallen for that so many times where I question myself. Is there something wrong that I just want to connect with one person and I just want that one person to only want to connect with me as well? Like, am I blocking them? Is there something wrong with me? Uh, am I, like, how do you say, um, restraining their freedom? Like, and honestly, again, like, Everyone has their own journey and their own preferences and their own path. And we just need to figure out what resonates for us. And yeah, I do want a family. And I am someone who is very much in love and just wants to connect with my partner forever. And that's kind of it, you know. And I'm tired to like think that there is something wrong with me because of that, you know. And also like this happens and I've seen and my friends also share this with me sometimes in like events like ecstatic dances, cacao ceremonies, like events like that, festivals, whatever, where there is like a lot of like dancing or like, you know, like sometimes more intimate connections and sharings that... I've been very deep into those events in my past. And now I also changed a little. And it's not that I'm like more closed off or something, or maybe it is. But now I have more boundaries and more discernment and more like, I don't just do something if I don't feel like it, you know. Uh, whereas in the past, maybe I would do it because I would think, oh, everyone does it and I'm the only one not doing it. Maybe I'm blocked you know and now i'm like yeah i might want to hug someone because i love hugs but maybe i don't want people touching me maybe i don't want like when it gets kind of you know like and again some people are more um liberated and expressed in that way and others are more conservative or whatever and one way or another it's okay it's just important that we 
know our values and our boundaries and have discernment to um, live by those values and live by that discernment and that truth. Yes, so true. Everyone has their own opinion about life, literally. Yeah, of course. I was in an ecstatic dance and I experienced that intimate, intimate touch and I just realized that I can't set up my boundaries. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Boundaries by the dance. Yeah, yeah. I know that. I've, I've had those uh, exercises. I've done those exercises as well. And sometimes people abuse of that love you feel for everyone. Ooh, okay, let's talk about that. We need to talk about that, Marta. Especially for women. And I know, like, this is not just for women. But honestly, sometimes it's dangerous to be a, a woman nowadays. And I'm going to share a little uh, personal story that just happened yesterday for me. So, because I am someone who is, like, very... I don't know what I am, what am I, uh, I don't know, like, um, like, sweet or good vibe or like that I, like, uh, I don't know, that, that I'm happy and that I, I love hugging people and I love people. Uh, even yesterday, I had someone crossing my boundaries in a way where I was like, what the actual fuck, like, do people still do this? Like, what is going on inside your head? Like, What's going on? Like, and I had someone who like just crossed the boundary and, and yeah, like, I'm like, how would you possibly think in your mind that that's okay to do? Like, of course that that's not okay. And of course, as a woman, I will never feel comfortable with you again because you just made me feel extremely uncomfortable and you don't even realize it because you're just um again not wanting to be censored but excited or whatever like you want to sometimes grab and sometimes there's this energy where you see someone and i'm sorry that i'm um focusing more on women i know it also goes the other way but like where there's there are these women who are so happy and loving and then a man like sees it and it's like I want to grab that. I want to touch that. Like, you're so sexy. You're so hot. And it's like, dude, what the actual fuck? Leave me the fuck alone. Like, what is wrong with you, dude? Like, what? What is going on? And this is so sad because this sometimes make people like us close up, close up a little, you know? Like, I protect myself. And, like, even protecting ourselves from, like, looking pretty or beautiful or whatever because that also brings vulnerability and predators and that's so sad that's so sad and that sometimes we contain our love because people take advantage of that you know okay let me read these um also i feel touch is an illusion no two atoms ever touch. So even these practices that involve touching is a little... Okay. Yeah, brother. And again, I get I get what you're saying. But can you imagine, for example, a predator saying that? You know, like, it can be very ugly very fast. It is. Loving person. You're, <laughs> you're very genuine. And they think they can say or do whatever just because you're a nice person, friendly and kind. Yes, I feel you. I I was also a woman in my past life and I understand how it feels to be crossed boundaries. It's serious. Feels like protecting a lot, even in energy wise, people cross boundaries. Yes, so whew, that was a lot. So yeah, like as someone who like and for women or people like us who are very sweet or transparent and authentic and open unfortunately and this is very sad because i did have to learn this in my life over and over again and honestly it changed me and i don't feel it changed me for the better but i kind of needed to do it like it changed me where i needed to like grow up and be more cold and closed because otherwise people especially mine would take advantage of me especially when i was younger and even now, and like when I go to certain events or something like that, and it's like 
it's sad, you know, that we need to close off because some people just want to like grab like, oh, you're so you're so shiny. Let me grab that. You know, that's so sad. So sad. And and then like you don't want to be a bad person and you don't want to tell them, dude, get get off, get off me or something like that. You don't want to hurt someone else's feelings. Then sometimes people cross your boundaries and that's not okay. That's not okay. Especially for people who are extremely sensitive and pure and genuine. That's not okay. False masculine always tries to force themselves to acquire feminine energy without respecting their safety and boundaries. Ooh, that just got me the chills. I'm going to read that again, seriously. False masculine always tries to force themselves to acquire feminine energy without respecting their safety and boundaries. Literally trying to force themselves to acquire feminine energy. Seriously, that's not masculine energy for me. That's like very wounded, dark masculine energy. And let me touch on that. Let me read this and then I will touch on that. Some people, and especially boys, they took advantage of me, of my sweetness. And because I didn't know how to set boundaries, they took advantage in my past. Yeah. I've had that happen to me many times as well, where people would like grab me or touch me and I would be uncomfortable, but I didn't want to like be, uh, how do you say, um, to be a bad person or to impose my boundaries, you know? That's why it's false masculinity. Yeah, so let's talk about that. So there's also these concepts online that now it feels like it's a trend. Everyone is talking about you need to connect with your dark feminine energy. You need to connect with your dark masculine energy. And let me just say this. And again, I don't know anything. I'm just sharing my own perspective, um, which is just as valuable as anyone else's. For example, for me, you can say like, I wouldn't, for example, okay, with dark feminine energy, some people say that connecting with your dark feminine energy is about like connecting with your sensuality and your sexuality and, you know, using that to manipulate men or to get men to do what you want. For me, that's called manipulation. For me, that's I'm like, you can put it in beautiful terms all you want. For me, that's manipulation and like, if you think about it, and again, I'm just sharing my opinion. It's okay if you don't agree. I wouldn't want to be with a man that I need to manipulate for, for them to do what I want. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck, you guys? That I'm going to use whatever to manipulate them to do certain things? Like, what's going on with the world nowadays? For me, that's insane. I'm also really sorry that you all had to go through uncomfortable experience with certain men. So that manipulation from a woman would be false feminine energy. Ooh, okay, let's, yeah, okay, yeah, let's put it into those terms. Instead of calling it dark feminine energy, we could call it false feminine energy. I like that. I'm going to go with that. False feminine energy. Again, uh, dark feminine energy for me can be something like putting a boundary. Like, no, you cannot touch me. Like, no, you cannot talk to me like that. That, for me, yeah, you can call that dark feminine energy. It's instead of being like, oh, love and light and letting people do whatever they want to do with you. It's no, it's like having boundaries and communicating those boundaries. So maybe, yeah, I can call that dark feminine energy. But now using my sensuality and my looks and my energy or whatever to manipulate other people or men to do something that benefits me. That's the, I don't know, like if I'm the only one who thinks that way, but for me, that does not sound good. And I wouldn't want to have relationships that are built on that, that are built on manipulation. Like, am I so alone in this? Like, I wouldn't want that. How can we want genu genu uh, genuine, 
relationships if we manipulate each other. Whether it's women manipulating with their dark feminine energy or men manipulating with their dark masculine energy. Yeah, dark feminine energy could be related to Kali Ma. Kali means dark in Hindi. Yeah, and for me that can be like putting boundaries, not always being the nice girl. Is being a respected being who respects herself to put and enforce boundaries. Now, using whatever to manipulate, no, 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 no. At least not for me. Again, not judging, Just that's just not for me. That's just not for me. And also men who like think like that their masculine energy is like forcing... Like, for example, uh, yeah, I can't say that word on, on Instagram, wait. Uh, <laughs> imposing themselves energetically or physically on a woman, that's not okay as well. And that's not masculine energy. Yes, exactly, correct. Setting boundaries can be dark feminine energy, well said, yeah. And now, again, this can be my own opinion, and I'm sorry if I also am bringing a little bit of judgment, but for me... Uh, divine masculine men are not those who just have relationships with all women and that just get all the women for me that's not a divine masculine man I'm sorry again if that's just me but this is something that and I'm not gonna say any names but there are famous people out there nowadays that, that uh, of course, because they are famous, they influence other people. And then younger men think that being a man is like going to bed with all the women they, they can get. That that's what being a man means. And that's so sad. And I see that even in people closer to me. And that's so sad. They have no idea. And again, this is my opinion. But I don't think that that's what divine masculine man is. It's not that you can get all the girls and that you just have relationships with a, a thousand women. I think a divine masculine man is a safe space, a protector a provider and I don't mean a provider meaning that he provides for everything and the woman doesn't do anything that's not what I'm saying yeah our society is kind of poisoned yeah like for me a masculine man is a man of honor and integrity and respect that says something and does it that has values and integrity and discernment and it's not swayed by every pretty woman that shows up and wants to uh, collect them as trophies. For me, divine masculine holds space to a woman to be herself. Like my perspective that Shiva is like blank canvas and Shakti paints on the blank canvas. Yeah, I like that. It's normal to be superficial and to deliver yourself, your body, your energy to everyone. And then you notice those people feel so empty. They just need fulfillment from the outside. Yeah. Honestly, I'm sorry, but men who just go to bed with thousands of women or a bunch of women because it's like a trophy and it's like, yeah, I did that. And like, like that's not that at least for me that doesn't do it for me that's not the vibe for me for me that that's not an attribute of a masculine divine masculine man i agree with you about the divine masculinity and again i'm just sharing my own um perspective and my own opinion i'm not saying that i'm right or that i'm wrong i'm just saying what i feel like the same for me to be a divine feminine woman i don't feel that means to seduce every man you know like i don't feel that that's what it is about i don't feel that that's kind of it 
especially on Instagram and social media. Ugh. Yeah, it, it, it goes very deep with men like, like having many women like trophies and women like seducing men like for fun like that's what it means to be a woman is seducing and again i'm sorry like and this is not to reprise anyone's sensuality or expression because again i am an artist so i'm all about expression but like yeah having some discernment and just values what what are our values and yeah for me i am I am, yeah, I am like this and I have this, this opinion and sometimes, and this also is like a paradox and a double edged sword because like, for example, okay, let's talk about that. So for example, some like if you watch my Instagram and my YouTube, it's me sharing information. You don't really see like pictures of me, like super sexy or something like that. That's just not my vibe. Uh, that's not what I want to be known for and felt for. I I have something to say. I, I'm. <laughs> it's not about my body or whatever. While at the same time, sometimes I would like to feel more comfortable, like uh, making a video dancing or expressing myself more artistically and with my body. But then I know that most people will receive that most men, most predators will receive that as an invitation. And it's not an invitation. So I would rather not post that. There are also women who do that for validation. And I know that because I've been there as well. Posting sexy pictures or sexy videos for validation. And this is again the paradox and the double-edged sword where like yeah we just want to post our pictures or a video of us dancing innocently or even if it's sensual but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an invitation for men to drool or for men to like reach out and say oh you're so sexy i want to do you like no so as women it's like it feels like we have this responsibility to like protect ourselves while at the same time allowing ourselves to express and it's so tricky and so nuanced. There needs to be this judgment and this balance. Because even if I post like something that is so pure and genuine and fun or loving or if, if it has any hint of sensuality or whatever, unfortunately, I know that men can see that as an invitation. And you know what's sad and what I've discovered in my life? And like, my partner used to tell me that a lot. And even other friends used to tell me that a lot. And I didn't believe them. And now I know that that's actually true. That they would tell me things like, you don't know this, but most men that are your friends, like men friends, if you would let them, they would try to... Uh, uh, how do you say? <clears throat> to get you. And I'm like, no, we're just friends. Like, I want to have men friends that we're just friends. Like, what are you talking about? And over and over and over and over again, I learned that that's true for many people, unfortunately. So where are the genuine, the genuine connections? Where are the safe spaces for us to express ourselves, but in a way where someone else is not going to want to grab our light because we are shining or want to, um, sorry, I cannot say that word, like to, uh, to impose themselves onto, into our energy just because we are dancing or because we are open or because we are sensual or because we are whatever. Where are the safe spaces for us to talk about this? Where are the safe spaces for women to be to feel safe? Where are the safe spaces for men to learn how to become like true men and women become true women? Again, sorry if this sounds judgmental, but 
it feels like we have lost our way in so many different aspects and that values like honor and integrity and family and respect are so far gone that it's kind of weird nowadays because of that my friends want to grab i felt like i had to isolate my friend myself from society yes that's so sad see so i just got uh, chills in my my heart and in my arms oh marta you too this is so sad i feel women i really feel we need these safe spaces for us to talk about this i've been single in my heart totally close for years yeah and this is so sad and honestly i know that there are real amazing men out there i know it and i know there are real amazing women out there as well and i hope we find each other and like it's i don't feel it's too much to ask that we respect each other because I can't even imagine the idea of being a part of what's going on nowadays. We go through a lot. Yeah. I don't want to play those games. And like, I watch, I don't watch TV, but I watch like a lot of YouTube videos. And sometimes I feel so sad seeing women sharing about like dark feminine energy and like using their sensuality and sexuality to like manipulate men. I'm sorry if I'm being detrimental, but I feel that that's so sad. I'm like, you don't need to do anything for any man to do anything for you. You just get to be you. And if someone truly loves you, that's all you need. You don't need to make all this effort. You don't need to manipulate no energy. You don't need nothing. Now, because I'm getting to know more of myself, I feel I am okay to coming out of my shell. Yeah yeah but like that's that's the thing it's like it feels like as women we do need to have this protection which is crazy because you know what feminine energy is also about like relaxing and being fluid but there is so much danger if we just allow ourselves to be open and fluid we do need protection like riverbanks so that People don't feel that they are entitled to our bodies or to our energies. And again, everyone is on their journey and I don't want to judge anyone. But I do know my values and I also see a lot of darkness disguised as freedom nowadays. And it makes me sad. And... And yeah, like, yeah, there, there's so much, there's so much here. And I feel this is such a deep topic and a deep subject that can be so triggering and vulnerable for, for all of us. And thank you so much for approaching this. It's so important. Oh, thank you, Marta. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being here and sharing as well. I really feel that we need these safe spaces. And again, not to project, but I, especially women, we need these safe spaces. And we need like spaces where, like for example, I've been in on like in events and stuff like that where they, like we were having like a women's retreat and there was like a men's retreat at the same time on the other side of the place. And then when we come together, it's like, can we honor the men without wanting anything from them or showing anything off? And can men hold space for the women without being like, oh, that one is sexy? Or, you know, like, can, can we just, you know, like be respectful and hold space? Thank you so much for opening these spaces. It's trustful and honest conversation heart to heart thank you sisters thank you i really appreciate you sharing and and like honestly feeling that i'm not the only one feeling this and i feel as women we really do need these spaces we really do need to have these conversations 
you, because you know what and i it's funny that i this have hadn't crossed my mind until this point of the conversation sometimes women get how do you, how do we do you say um we also separate ourselves not just from men but from our sisters because we compete with each other for men's attentions and validation and that's so sad that we lose our sisters and our sisterhood and our connection with our sisters because of our beauty, because we want validation, because we want to be the most beautiful, the sexiest, or to get the man, or like whatever. It's so sad. It's so fucking sad. It's so sad. And that cannot be our story. We need to write a better story. Ugh. So I knew today we were going to go deep, but I, I didn't really know what, uh, like the depths of what we were about to go into today. I confess that I felt afraid of my beauty. Yeah, because it can be scary. Yeah. You know, like uh, many years ago on my journey, I um, I accidentally, I don't, I don't know how this happened, but I accidentally realized that if I just, like, that, that yeah, I, I, I realized that my beauty or whatever could be an asset that I could use um, with men. And as soon as I remember this, it was many, many years ago. And as soon as I noticed that, because I was a model at the time, I stopped everything. I stopped modeling and I became a hippie. So I started only using like hippie clothes and like baggy, um, those hippie trousers, you know, like and, and clothes like that. Because like, I was like, I don't, I don't want that. And so it's like as honoring our beauty and at the same time being afraid of our beauty as like enjoying like um, taking care of ourselves, of our hair, of our bodies, uh, clothes, whatever, uh, dancing and feeling sensual and beautiful while at the same time like wanting to like hide that or protect that because of these predators. Oh my God, I relate so much. Okay, great. <laughs> It's not just me, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and again, may may we not, like, I hope we don't separate ourselves from each other as women. That we don't compete with each other so much, that we don't feel um, intimidated by another sister's beauty that we don't compete, that we don't compare, but that we celebrate each other as we are. That, that we truly honor ourselves as sisters. That we feel and become safe spaces for each other to go deep and have these conversations to help our sisters feel safe. I want you to feel safe because I know what, the, what feeling unsafe is. So I want to be a safe space for you. And let's cry together. And let's laugh together. And let's hug and hold space for each other. And like, I don't want your mind. I'm not going to seduce your mind. I don't want your mind. It's your mind. <laughs> like, and I don't need to be afraid of you wanting to... Um, to get or to seduce my mind like we can all chill like we can all chill we can just be in peace and respect and honor yes i feel the safest space that i am able to offer to women is considering them a sister or mother or friend this is what as a man i have felt i can hold safety for every woman yeah yeah to not just see women as a piece of meat that you want to grab and eat. But like, yeah, those are your sisters. Those could literally be your sisters. 
your cousins, your mothers, your daughters, and also, and even the same as women, that we see men not, ju not just like, oh, he's so muscular, or he's so whatever, but that we see them also as brothers, as fathers, as sons. I really feel that maybe this is something we all need in, in our lives or maybe in society or whatever right now. And again, this is just my own opinion. But yeah, I've seen a lot during my journey and like um, without me necessarily, well, honestly, like I kind of wish I wouldn't have to be the one having these uncomfortable conversations because I need to be very open, but also protective and I need to be very authentic, which means that I'm also very, very vulnerable to be having these conversations. So I didn't necessarily want to be the one doing this, but it seems more and more that the more I want to record a video or go live, this topic seems seem to be like what comes up the most. So again, if if I shall be a safe space for us to have these conversations, then I'm here for it. And I really, I really like pray or whatever for a world where men don't need to compete with each other to get women. Women don't need to compete with each other to get men. That we respect like other people's relationships, like. I'm not gonna go after your mind your mind is not gonna go after me and like vice versa and that we can genuinely have pure hearted connections with each other with our sisters and with our brothers and to have friends without second intentions that we honor ourselves and our boundaries and our values and each other's as well yeah you know like i pray for humanity a lot i don't like pray pray like i don't go down on my knees and like pray but like i really deeply feel for all of us i see a lot of things happening in the world a lot of changes and so many people living life in so many different ways and i pray i pray for us yeah. <sighs> Thank you so much for for being here with me and for for sharing this space with me and for being vulnerable and honest to have this conversation with me. Thank you for like trusting my energy and this space to be a safe space for us to share these things. Uh, because I know that's not always comfortable to do so. Thank you, sis, for your words. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Thank you for, for trusting me and for feeling safe enough to also share uh, vulnerably and authentically. And yeah, like... I really do want to keep creating these safe spaces live and in person for us to have these conversations and for us to hug and dance and cry and laugh together in ways that feel genuinely safe and nurturing. So thank you. Thank you, Sylvia, as well. Thank you all for being here. And yeah, I guess... I guess this is what I wanted to share today. This is what wanted to flow through. As always, when I come live, I don't really know what I'm going to share until a few seconds before. And then I start talking and sometimes we go much deeper than expected. And today was one of those days. Thank you so much for being here with me. And honestly, like, first, I just want to send love and blessings to our brothers 
who genuinely respect us and respect themselves and each other and hold space. So brother, if you're here or if you're watching the replay, I, I honor you and thank you for your integrity and your honor. And for my sisters who are so openly vulnerable and authentic and beautiful, I love you and I see you and I'm here for you and I'm here with you. And yes, I want to hug you. So I'm sending you a virtual hug right now. May we feel safe in each other's energies. May we bless ourselves and be a blessing to each other. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, sisters. Thank you so much for being here with me. And I will see you tomorrow for the next one. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you.